The famous Sears catalog so many knew and loved is long gone, and soon its last few stores may disappear as well. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 companies that went bankrupt. The shutdown caught everyone here at Kennedy Airport by surprise. It's been no secret that Pan Am has been in serious financial trouble for years. For this list, we'll be looking at the most prolific businesses and firms that have declared bankruptcy. We'll be including companies that eventually emerged from bankruptcy so long as they entered the process at one time. What do you make of these companies and their stories? Let us know in the comments below. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com play. Number 20, The Weinstein Company. As the name suggests, famous film studio The Weinstein Company was founded by brothers Bob and Harvey Weinstein. While it was only created in 2005, the studio found immediate success and released back-to-back -back Best Picture winners, The King's Speech and The Artist. But you know the name and you know the story. Co-founder Harvey Weinstein was accused of some high-profile crimes in October 2017 and was immediately fired from the company. It didn't take long for said company to completely implode. They filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy just five months later, and their assets were sold to Lantern Entertainment, who in turn signed a distribution deal with Lionsgate. The Weinstein Company, they filed for bankruptcy as part of an asset sale to an investment firm, which is Dallas-based Lantern Capital. Number 19, Nortel. We guess no business lasts forever, even though it may seem like it at times. Canadian telecommunications company Nortel was created all the way back in 1895 and once held enormous power on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Nortel Networks is building the new high-performance internet, and it can be whatever you want it to be. So tell us, what do you want the internet to be? But the company faced numerous controversies throughout its lifetime, including unfair executive pay and some major bookkeeping errors, resulting in charges from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. They also suffered extensively from the financial crisis of 2008, resulting in a filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in January 2009. It became the largest bankruptcy case in Canadian history. In 2009, Nortel flamed out, declaring bankruptcy. Sifting through the wreckage, prosecutors laid fraud charges against three former executives, but today a judge found them not guilty. Number 18, Borders Group. We hate to say it, but bookstores may be a relic of the past. This is perhaps best exemplified by the collapse of Borders Group, which was known for its chain of eponymous stores. The company became a pioneer of the big box bookseller concept. At its peak in 2003, Borders had more than 1,200 stores around the country, each with thousands of new titles. There were over 500 Borders locations throughout the United States, but none had been profitable since the mid-2000s. Unfortunately, every single one was closed in 2011 after the company filed for bankruptcy. By September of that year, every Borders in the country had shuttered its doors and the website had gone dark, ending a company that had been around since 1971. But today, its representatives were in court with a plan to liquidate its remaining 399 stores beginning as early as tomorrow. More than 10,000 employees will lose their jobs as a result. The company's trademarks were subsequently purchased by prominent rival Barnes & Noble. Number 17, Circuit City. This popular electronics brand started life as the Wards Company in 1949 and revolutionized the business of consumer electronics. The name eventually changed to Circuit City, which became one of the most recognizable brands in America. At Circuit City, we have all the hottest new TVs, from HDTV to plasma, LCD, and more. And with unbeatable prices guaranteed, you'll find the perfect one. However, the company faced significant financial problems throughout the 2000s and eventually filed for bankruptcy on November 10, 2008. Despite a promise to the contrary, Circuit City began liquidation just a few months later, and every store was closed by March 2009. It's just something that's very sobering and um, tells us all that uh, we're not safe, any of us, for having a job um, to retirement. It's just really kind of a sad situation. The brand name was bought by Systemax Inc. and later acquired by a man named Ronnie Schmoyle, who relaunched Circuit City online. Number 16, DeLorean Motor Company. While the company itself is long gone, the DeLorean name may forever live in our collective hearts. It's amazing what a single movie can do to a brand's reputation. The DMC DeLorean is featured prominently throughout the Back to the Future trilogy, giving it perhaps an unfavorable and inaccurate legacy. Doc, uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, 
If you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? By nearly all accounts, the DeLorean was an awful car. It suffered from a number of notable performance issues, and the overall quality did not warrant its premium price of $25,000, or about $80,000 in 2023 currency. The DeLorean Motor Company didn't make it 10 years, going bankrupt in 1982, and the DMC was the only car it ever produced. John DeLorean had realized his sports car dream. But there was just one problem. It was terrible. Number 15, Tower Records. Many things are being phased out as we enter deeper and deeper into the digital age. Unfortunately, the music industry has been hit very hard since the advent of the internet, and many music stores have gone the way of the dinosaurs. Tower Records was the first major record store. I mean, you could go to a department store, maybe they have a record section. You can go to a little mom and pop record store. The first Tower Records opened in Sacramento, California in 1960, and eventually became one of the country's flagship music retailers. But things like managerial blunders and internet piracy contributed to the company twice filing for bankruptcy, once in 2004 and again in 2006. The assets were sold in an auction to Great American Group, and the last store was closed in December 2006. The brand has since been revitalized online, and there are plans of reopening some brick-and-mortar stores. So much of what Tower was, was the employees. Starting with Russ, obviously, they were such community gathering places that online experience is, is really not the same. Number 14, Sears Holdings. There's a certain nostalgic magic to large department stores like Sears. Once the nation's largest retailer, it was one-stop shopping for many households. Why do I shop at Sears? It's easy for me. I can pick up tennis balls, children's clothing, torque wrenches, and a dish all in the same shop. Unfortunately, the internet and online shopping effectively killed them forever. Sears Holdings was the parent company of both Sears and Kmart. Two big box stores with few locations and many barren aisles. Sears Holdings did what they could in the midst of an imminent collapse, but said collapse was simply too great and the company filed for bankruptcy in October 2018. Under billionaire CEO Edward Lampert, it struggled through years of losses and the closure of hundreds of stores before today's bankruptcy filing with $5.6 billion of debt. Over 140 stores were permanently shuttered, leaving behind both dusty debris and favorable memories. The retail assets were sold to ESL Investments, who in turn launched a private company called Transformco, which acquired Sears hometown and outlet stores. Unfortunately, this too went defunct in 2019. Number 13, Bed Bath & Beyond. The last word in this brand name took on increased symbolism in 2023 when it was announced that they were entering bankruptcy. This is a company that's been struggling for a while, as you've mentioned. They've been saying that, look, if we can't raise our, uh, the money that we need last minute, we could ultimately file for bankruptcy, which is what happened ultimately yesterday. What is beyond for Bed Bath & Beyond? Probably nothing but nostalgia. The first store was called Bed & Bath and it opened in New Jersey in 1971. 40 years later, the company had over a thousand stores in America and was the leading name in home accessories. But COVID hit the company hard and it collapsed throughout the early 2020s. Bed Bath & Beyond had really fallen behind the times. They had not invested in their technology. Their online presence was slow and clunky. They just were not keeping pace with all the changes. 2023 opened badly, with shares plunging by a third and rumors of bankruptcy percolating through the media. The entire Canadian division was closed in February and the company fulfilled the prophetic rumors two months later by filing for Chapter 11. Number 12, CIT Group. CIT Group, named after its early title of Commercial Investment Trust, is 550th on Fortune's 1,000th largest American companies list as of 2018. However, the financial services giant suffered significant problems amidst the Great Recession of the late 2000s and filed for bankruptcy protection in November of 2009. By mid-2009, CIT had amassed roughly $65 billion in debt, and while the filing was expected and prepared for, it was still one of the biggest bankruptcies in American history. CIT emerged from bankruptcy after only 38 days, making it the only major financial sector company at the time to do so. Number 11, Pacific Gas and Electric Company. The Pacific Gas and Electric Company, also known as PG&E, is a utility company that provides, you guessed it, gas and electricity to roughly 5 million people in Northern California. California suffered a major drought in 2001, which severely limited the available amount of hydroelectric power. PG&E were subsequently forced into buying exorbitantly priced electricity from out of state, which resulted in massive losses. The utility company entered bankruptcy on April 6, 2001. 
As a result, California lost about $45 billion and millions of people were forced to pay higher than average electricity prices to make up for the debt. Number 10. Marvel We got the superheroes, now when do we get the movie about Marvel? Because the story is a stunner. Despite a strong start to the decade, Marvel began suffering financial problems in the mid-1990s, which was due largely to the shrinking comic book market. The company filed for bankruptcy on December 27, 1996. However, it was in this state for less than two years. In June of 1998, Marvel Entertainment Group merged with Toybiz, the company that manufactured Marvel's merchandise. We found despite months spent near bankruptcy, Marvel now seems to be bouncing back. Marvel is going to try to take uh, its comic books into the 21st century through a number of different ways. The merger created Marvel Enterprises, which was later renamed Marvel Entertainment to reflect its expanding presence in the film industry. Well, we all know how that went. After years of historic success, Marvel was purchased by Disney in 2009 for $4 billion. So it is very, very consistent with our strategic focus. It's a company that we have followed for a while and admire a lot, both for its content and for its people, and we're really excited about this. Number nine, Toys R Us. Toys R Us was once one of the biggest toy stores in the world. It was founded in 1948 and subsequently opened nearly 1,800 stores around the world, including 800 in the United States alone. However, due to a large variety of factors, no, not just that kids would rather spend their time with a smartphone, Toys R Us filed for Chapter 11 on September 18, 2017. The company had amassed $5 billion in debt and hadn't seen profit for nearly five years. On March 14, 2018, the company announced that it was closing every one of their UK and American stores, totaling roughly 900 outlets. Number 8. Kodak Kodak was once THE name in photography and film. The company was founded in 1888 and enjoyed immense prosperity throughout much of the following century. However, the company struggled upon the advent and rise of digital photography and they were slow to transition to that quickly dominant trend. They eventually filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in January 2012. The company stopped making various products as a result of the bankruptcy and sold off various patents to other companies, to the tune of $525 million. But the company rose from the ashes in September 2013 and continues to operate to this day. Number 7. Blockbuster Who didn't see this coming? Like Radio Shack and HMV, time wasn't kind to Blockbuster. Blockbuster dominated the video rental market throughout the 90s and early 2000s, operating over 9,000 stores and employing 84,000 people. However, with the rise of Redbox, pirating, video on demand, and especially Netflix, Blockbuster lost significant revenue and filed for bankruptcy in 2010. Today, only a handful of Blockbuster stores remain. Many people in the industry blamed Blockbuster for its own downfall, with some citing poor management and senseless business tactics. But hey, at least the closures gave us that hilarious last Blockbuster Twitter account. Number 6. Worldcom Worldcom was a telecommunications company who filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in July 2002. At the time, this was the largest bankruptcy in American history, and with it came with many changes to the company. WorldCom paid $750 million to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. A new CEO was hired. The company moved from Mississippi to Virginia, and it changed its name to MCI Inc. MCI emerged from bankruptcy in 2004, although many of its creditors were left unpaid. Some of these creditors included laid-off employees who never received severance or benefits. WorldCom's co-founder and CEO Bernard Ebers was later convicted of fraud and conspiracy and sentenced to 25 years in prison. Number 5. Pan Am it didn't get much bigger than Pan Am. Founded as Pan American Airways back in 1927, Pan Am became an American icon for its many airline innovations, blue logo, and the white uniforms of its staff. Pan Am was our country's unofficial flag carrier to the rest of the world. The Beatles flew Pan Am on their first trip to the United States. A Pan Am skyscraper towered over midtown Manhattan. The company had a monopoly by the mid-20th century and even introduced the Boeing 707 in 1958. It seemed like the party would never end, but the airline industry was deregulated in 1978, an event that increased competition and instigated the collapse of Pan Am. It suffered throughout much of the 80s and desperately attempted to restructure, but the end was nigh and the company declared bankruptcy in 1991. Finally, after years of downsizing and selling off assets, Pan Am declared bankruptcy in early 1991, and after 11 more months, stopped flying for good. The announcement was met with widespread shock and grief, as it signified the end of an American tradition. Number 4. Enron The Enron Affair is one of the most well-known financial scandals in American history, and the name Enron has since become synonymous with corporate fraud and corruption. 
Enron was founded in 1985 and quickly became one of the most prosperous suppliers of electricity and natural gas. In 2000, Enron saw over $100 billion in revenue. Or did they? In 2001, Enron was revealed to perpetrating massive amounts of accounting fraud. The company quickly entered bankruptcy, some people went to jail, employees lost billions in pensions, and the ordeal caused massive shockwaves throughout the business world. Number 3. General Motors General Motors is one of the most iconic car companies of all time. In 2016, over 10 million GM vehicles were sold around the globe. However, like most companies at the time, including rival car manufacturer Chrysler, GM suffered heavily in the Great Recession and went bankrupt in June 2009. They emerged from this financial purgatory roughly one month later with significant help from the government through its Troubled Asset Relief Program. As a result of the bankruptcy, GM discontinued various brands, including Saturn and Pontiac brands. Number 2. Washington Mutual Washington Mutual was once a holding company who owned the largest thrift institution in the United States. By 2007, Washington Mutual employed over 40,000 people, had over $188 billion in deposits, and had assets valued at over $327 billion. And like other companies, including CNO Financial and MF Global, it all went kaput. In September 2008, the FDIC took control of Washington Mutual after $16 billion was withdrawn from the bank. The very next day, Washington Mutual Inc. filed for bankruptcy. By 2009, WAMU branches became Chase branches, bondholders lost $30 billion, and Washington Mutual had a reputation as the largest failed bank in American history. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Lehman Brothers the fall of Lehman Brothers is arguably the most notable and extreme example of bankruptcy in the history of the United States. Lehman Brothers was founded in 1850, and by 2008 it was America's fourth largest investment bank. However, Lehman Brothers became involved in the subprime mortgage crisis of the late 2000s, resulting in a host of financial liabilities that led to its declaration of bankruptcy in September 2008. At the time, the bank owned $639 billion in assets but were over $750 billion in debt. The bankruptcy was the largest in American history and it significantly weakened the already fragile financial markets at a vulnerable time. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.